In this short video, I'm going to show you how I post-process my Milky Way images from beginning to end using Photoshop, Lightroom, and Starry Landscape Stacker. When I first started practicing astrophotography, getting a single exposure of the night sky seemed like good enough for me. It wasn't until I started going out more and kind of learning from my mistakes that I soon learned that a single exposure was not good enough for what I wanted to present to a larger audience. By learning programs like Photoshop and Lightroom and Starry Landscape Stacker, I was able to take multiple exposures and blend them all together into one single image. The workflow that I'm going to go over isn't the only way that you can achieve beautiful photos. This just happens to be what I find myself most, most comfortable with and comfortable enough to share with others so that they can hopefully achieve the images they want. After you've imported all of your images into Lightroom, I'm gonna edit my, my Milky Way first. And um, as you can see, it's a little underexposed, so I kinda wanna bump up the exposure just a little bit before I get started. Um, and then I'm gonna bump up my vibrance and saturation. Now this is a method that I learned from um, a YouTube channel, Lonely Spec, in the past to get white, perfect white balance for Milky Way. Um, I'm sure there's other ways out there to do it, but this is the way that I like the most. It looks like because I was in Alabama Hills, my, my white balance is kind of where I want it to be. Um, I might increase the, uh, my yellows a little bit and then I'm going to increase my uh, magentas a little bit as well. And then once I have that, I'm gonna double click of vibrance and saturation, and you're gonna see a very flat Milky Way. So to bring some life to this, uh, this is kind of the way I go about it. With the tone curve, I will bump up the blacks a little bit, bring the shadows back down, and then increase my highlights to kind of give myself some more contrast for the Milky Way alone. On top of this, I'll add a little bit more contrast. I'll bring my highlights down just a little bit, my whites down just a little bit, bring up my clarity, and now I'm gonna play with the saturation of the Milky Way. So I'll start with bring up my orange just a little bit, uh, yellows, blues, purples, and magentas. And I will remove chromatic aberration as well. After I've made these, these uh, changes to this image right here, um, I'll have all of my Milky Way selected and then I will sync all of those settings uh, so that every image looks the same. Uh, just the Milky Way photos um, into a folder so that I can then open them up into Starry Landscape Stacker. So with the images selected, I will hit Command Shift E to bring up the export um, module and then I will choose choose and uh, scroll to the folder that I want everything to pop into and it looks like they will end up in here. Once everything is exported, I will then open up Starry Landscape Stacker. And in Starry Landscape Stacker, I will load my recent images. So once everything is loaded, I click the Find Sky button, and it's gonna do a good job of kind of like outlining the sky. I actually did a really incredible job this time around. And aside from maybe a little bit of like gray around the, um, the rocks um, in this foreground, which I will uh, actually use the paint sky tool right here to kind of blend back in. And you don't have to be this precise. I've just got really terrible OCD these days and have found that this is what I like to be doing.
So after I've checked everything and made sure it looks great, I will hit align and save. This will stack all of my, my images and then create a final composite image that I will then bring into Photoshop. Once the compositing is done, I'm gonna leave it at median blend mode and then I can hit save. It's gonna bring up this pop-up right here. Um, I'll go ahead and save the image. It will ask you about the sky. I tend to throw the sky out, but you can save it if you just want the cutout of the sky. I'm not going to. Um, once I've saved that, I will then go back to the folder that it sits in and I'm going to just drop this off in Photoshop and let that open up. As it's opening up, I'm gonna to start to work on my blue hour foreground. Uh, these four images that I took right here, I will right click on one of the thumbnails and with them all selected, I will open them as layers in Photoshop. Now that everything is loaded into Photoshop, you can see that all four layers are stacked on top of one another. And I will um, convert these to a smart object. And I am going to change the uh, smart objects into median blend modes. I will then take these images, duplicate them both, and rasterize them because I am now gonna use a layer mask to blend the bush and that uh, focal plane into uh, the, the arch. I want the arch layer to be on top. And I will add a layer mask to that. I'm gonna then take my uh, brush tool. I like to keep it at 100% uh, opacity when it's closest to the foreground and using black as the uh, the brush. I will then paint in the, the foreground that's blurry from uh, uh, focus stacking. On the foreground layer, I use what's called the magic eraser tool and um, I set my tolerance somewhere between like 15 and 20. Um, now what this means is that any of these shades of blue, um, it's going to, depending on how high you have the tolerance, the more blue it's going to delete when you hit the button. So um, when I hit like a spot like right here, it's gonna kill all that blue that has like the same kind of uh, range. Um, I can do it as I keep going up. Now, once I have a pretty good amount of this removed, um, I will then go in and use uh, the uh, background eraser tool. And the background eraser tool I use quite a bit. It's really good during uh, replacing skies uh, in the middle of the day for real estate photography. Uh, it's also great uh, for using it here. I like to keep my tolerance around 12. I just found it's the best number and it really helps out when really kind of cleaning up um, like this, this trim around the foreground and the background. Keep the protect foreground color uh, box checked. I'm gonna go around and delete as much as I possibly can right now and I'll show you how I then go ahead and blend my image afterwards. Once you're done cutting out the uh, foreground, uh, you still have specks in the sky you gotta deal with. And the easiest way that I've come across removing all of this is by creating a layer under your foreground and filling it with um, a very contrasty color. Um, I tend to go with orange just because that's the easiest. And then you can see what spots you've left behind. Um, I'll end up going with the eraser tool and just kind of cleaning up as much as I, I can, which hopefully is everything. And um, at that point, you'll then have the separate uh, sky and foreground.
Once everything's cut out, you can then go ahead and remove the orange layer. Um, and at this point, I think it looks good. Um, but what I really want to be doing to this is making uh, the foreground kind of blend a little bit more seamlessly into it. So in the adjustments layer, and I'll make sure that I have my foreground layer clicked, in, my, in the adjustments, I'll open up both a uh, curves layer and just kind of bring that down a little bit while also making sure that it only is affecting my, my front, my top layer. Um, and I'll also uh, bring in a hue and saturation layer and just bring my saturation down um, a little bit and also make sure that this is only applied to the first layer. After that's been done, I'm going to just dodge and burn my Milky Way a little bit. I select highlights and I just like to do maybe like one little swoop over, do the bottom as well. And then with the burn, I like to keep my shadows at around 4%. And just in the middle, I'll kind of brush a little bit. At this point, um, I might play with the curves just a little bit to make the foreground a little bit darker, um, but I'm pretty much good right now. Right click and flatten the image. I'll save this back in to Lightroom, and in Lightroom, I will then go ahead and just inspect it a little bit. Uh, pretty happy with where it is. Um, and I'll just add a little bit more um, high, uh, saturation to the Milky Way, just so it's a little bit more punchy. And at this point, I think I am done.